What's up YouTube, I'm AVScape and welcome back to another video. Today, uh, we're starting our new series and that is going to be learning how to boss. There are a lot of different bosses in the game I do know how to do, but a lot of ones that I don't as well, like all of the God Wars bosses, I wanna learn how to do them by myself in case one day I do decide to start an Iron Man series. I need to figure out how to do these bosses by myself so that I can go and get all the drops and stuff like that. Now, the one that I want to start out with is raids. I want to start out with raids because I've done a lot of team raids before. I really enjoy them, but I never really learned how to solo them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to crack in. I'm recording this intro after I've already done it. So uh, spoiler alert, I learned how to do raids. But uh, I'm going to go through and show you guys my progression and some things that I learned throughout my time learning solo raids. So for my first few solo alms, I decided that I was going to suicide an inventory of food where I would take in a bunch of super restores and sour brews, die deliberately in the boss so that if I ran out of food, I can just pick them up off the ground because I stay in an instance for 30 minutes. So while I was getting used to all of the different mechanics of alm, I decided to suicide an inventory so I lost less points at the start of Ulm than I would if I died at the end of Ulm and had to take in more supplies anyway. For my first few Ulm kills, I went through a ton of supplies. There's so many different things that you need to learn when killing Ulm that... <coughs> nice. Thanks, guys. Thanks. There's so many different things that you need to learn when killing Ulm that it's very difficult to do all of them at once. There's so many different things that are happening. It's hard to keep track of them all. And uh, you end up taking a lot of damage if you really don't know what you're doing. So for the first solo arm, I basically got down how to do the mage hand, which is essentially you will attack the hand, run to a different position in the map, attack the hand again, run to a different position, and Ulm's head will continue turning. You don't have to worry about taking any damage. I learned that in the first raid. And then for the second one, the melee hand is a lot more difficult. You have to get Ulm in a certain cycle and that's a lot more difficult to learn. So I'm looking back at the clip of the first time that I tried to do the melee hand and uh, it's, it's making me cringe. I'll put in a clip now of what uh, normal four to one would look like, which is what you're supposed to do on the melee hand at Ulm. And then afterwards we can take a look at what I was doing in my first attempt. So that's what normal four to one looks like. And as you can see from these clips, I'm nowhere near that. I'm taking every single hit. I'm supposed to be taking one hit for every four hits I do on the hand. And from what I'm seeing, I'm taking four hits for every one hit I do on the hand. So you can imagine throughout this uh, first solo on, I was taking a lot of damage. I had to use a lot of supplies, but, uh, as you saw from the previous clip, we've gotten a lot better since then. So learning how to do four to one on the melee hand is uh, is very difficult. Um, I can imagine it'd be a lot more difficult for someone that has never done any raids before. But as you guys can see from the next clip, uh, it is very frustrating. Oh. There we go. In. I'm going to get hit by the special here. Yep. Yeah. All right. I just need to like, I'm one tick off, you know, I need to get better. There's the special, all right. It's an attack, followed by an attack. I should have run that way, that was silly. One, that's nothing. Now in, one, here we go. Two, three. I uh, missed one there, and I came back a tick too early. Come on, Jake, come on. But as with all things in life, the uh, the more you stick with them, the better they're going to get. And uh, in my fourth or fifth raid, I managed to pretty much get four to one down, and things were going a lot better. The next thing we had to move on to was not having to suicide an inventory at all which meant taking less damage. So it ended up taking me about 15 to 20 raids after I learned how to do four to one to manage to get Ulm down without having to pick up any supplies off the ground. But we did manage to get it done. And then after that, 
the only next thing we have to learn is how to do a no prep arm, which is essentially you go into the raid, you do the entire raid, and then you go straight into arm without making any potions or anything like that. But in order to do that, you need to get very good at doing the rest of the bosses in the raid so that you don't use any of your supplies throughout the raid leading up to arm. All right, guys, so the first thing that I had to learn uh, when learning solo raids to save a bit of damage is the Skeletal Mystics rooms. Now, if you step within melee distance of the Skeletal Mystics, they will try and attack you with melee. And as long as you don't attack them back, they will stop attacking you with mage no matter where you go in the room. So as long as you get aggro on the Skeletal Mystic, like I'm showing you to do now, it will try and attack you with melee. And uh, when it can't attack you with melee, it won't attack you with magic. If this one will ever get aggroed, there we go. And then we can run around to this one, get the aggro of this, and none of them will be able to attack us anymore. And uh, we can go ahead and just kill them from there. So once you have the aggro of all the Mystics, you can then go ahead and get them into a safe spot. Yes, I know, fantastically designed boss by Jagex, but uh, literally all you have to do is run up here, and then run back down to this square, and you can stand there one tick flicking the whole time and just attack the Skeletal Mystic back and never take any damage. That's how you save damage in the Skeletal Mystics room. Now, another thing that you can do to save damage in the Skeletal Mystics room is when you're first getting the aggro of them, I like to put on my armadillo, my occult necklace, and my staff. I don't actually know if the occult and the staff give any mage defense, but uh, you know, you want to chuck on all your mage defense and chuck your augury on. So when you're trying to get them aggroed, they will. Uh, They'll hit you less with magic. So the next room that I learned how to save supplies in is the Tecton room. And in the Tecton room, basically you can do it without taking any damage whatsoever. You just essentially have to step away from Tecton as he goes to hit you. So as we see here, step away, step back in, step away, step back in. And if you do that, you'll never take any damage from Tecton. And then once his uh, meteors start falling, you just have to dodge them and uh, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, simple rigid ditch. Now, the next room that I learnt was the Matadal room. Now, I thought this would be a lot like team raids where you would just get the Matadal down to about half hit points, then throw a freeze in, and uh, it wouldn't go back to the tree. However, I quickly learned that, that is not very consistent at all. And uh, I learned that the best thing you could possibly do is go ahead and chuck on your tank bottoms. Uh, in this case, I have the armadillo, and then go ahead and chuck on the staff and the occult necklace, whack on your augury and your range prayer, and as soon as you get in there, you want to want to run straight down to the meat tree and start cutting that. Now, in between cutting at the meat tree, when you get your XP drop, you can actually turn around and attack the mutter dial, and uh, you won't miss any wood cutting ticks, but you can also do a little bit of damage to the mutter dial anyway. Once it gets within melee distance, change to melee prayer, and uh, in between its attacks, you can actually pray mage, so you don't get hit by the big mother doll. Another thing that I found in the mother doll room to save a bit of supplies is once you get down to low health, especially if you're overloaded, uh, it helps a lot to just tick eat the attacks from the big mother doll. You're going to take a lot less damage over the course of the, uh, the room, and uh, if you're overloaded, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now, the next place that I learned how to save supplies on is the vanguards. Now, there's not really a whole heap you can learn about the vanguards. You're going to take damage most of the time anyway, but you can sometimes safe spot the, the melee, which is very big, because if the melee can't hit you, you're obviously going to take no damage from it. The major, there's really nothing you can do with the major. You sort of just have to take damage from this one, but um, obviously try and avoid as much as you can. And then the last one we can do is the uh, Ranger. When you have the Ranger on you, once you hit it down to enough hit points, if you go ahead and stand literally underneath it, it can't attack you and none of the other Vanguards can attack you. So that's how you save all your supplies on the Vanguards room. And uh, obviously try not to reset them because that would be an unmitigated disaster. But as you guys can see here, I'm standing right next to the melee. I can attack it and it won't hit me back because there are some spots in the Vanguard's room where the melee, it just can't move to for some reason. But uh, that's how you save your supplies on the Vanguard's room. So the next boss that I uh, decided to learn how to save supplies at was Vassa. Now there really isn't a whole lot you can actually do to save supplies at Vassa. The only thing you can do is stay on low hit points the entire time because obviously once you get teleported by Vassar, you're going to take a lot of damage. 
uh, the best thing you can do is just stay on low hit points so that if you do happen to get teleported again, you will be on low hit points anyway and you won't take as much damage. So I always try and stick to the very lowest health I possibly can for while I'm running around Vassa. So as you guys can see, I've just stayed at very low health and uh, we are about to get teleported again. And uh, as Vassa works, you will get hit for your entire hit points minus five. So I now only need to use one more dose of brew and I will be back to normal hit points again and easy as that. So the next room that I learned how to save some supplies in is the shaman's room. Turns out you can actually safe spot these bad boys. If you stand far enough back and get them caught behind a corner, you can actually just stand here and hit them and they can't hit you back. Once again, another fantastically designed boss by Jagex, well done. So the next boss that I learned how to save some supplies at is Vespula. Now, the best thing you can do at Vespula to save supplies is have a prayer enhanced potion. Unfortunately, this is the first room of the raid, so I don't have a prayer enhanced potion on me, but uh, I'm not gonna go through how to do Vespula, but you guys know, you whack up your prayer and you basically attack the portal. The best thing you can do to save supplies in the Vespula room is switch to Accurate. Not only are you going to hit a little bit harder, you're going to hit more often and that's going to save your restores. And if you're using a Prayer Enhanced Potion, it's going to take five ticks for the Prayer Enhanced to tick over anyway. So that's the best thing you can do to save supplies. Obviously, it's not the most efficient way to do the room, but that's the best thing you can do to save supplies on Vespula. So the last thing that I learned uh, on the Ulm phase to save supplies is a little thing that people like to call four to one. I'm going to try and demonstrate it to you while I'm talking to you live but uh, it is quite difficult to pull off, so I might just have to voice over this afterwards. So essentially with four to one, you'll attack Olm's hands, either one of them, four times without being hit by Olm once. Uh, that's gonna save you all of the damage on the final phase, and you also don't have to pray. And I've just lagged. Oh God, if I die, I'm gonna be fuming. Oh no, I've lost connection. I've been kicked out of the raid on Olm. I just got kicked out of the raid. <laughs> That has to be the most infuriating thing possible. Now I'm going to have to get a clip off my stream to show you guys how to do 4 to 1 because I'll be damned if I'm doing another raid before I go down the pub. Alright, so guys, I have to apologize for the quality of this clip. Uh, unfortunately, the internet here in, uh, in Reading is fucking terrible and uh, I haven't been able to stream in the best quality, but basically this is 4 to 1. As you can see, my character is running uh, from side to side here. Uh, not taking any damage from the boss, except for just there. Just forget you saw that. And uh, as I run from side to side, I'm able to hit the melee hand three times and the mage hand one time, giving me four hits to Ulm's zero hits, which is four zero. It's only possible to do on the last phase of Ulm if you don't mess it up like I do a lot. It's only possible to do on the last phase of Ulm because on the last phase, the hand doesn't go down. But as you can see, it's really cool. Your character flies across the screen. It's probably my favorite part of learning solo raids. So there you have it, guys. I learned how to do solo raids. You guys can expect a guide coming soon. Uh, probably going to have to wait until I get home from England from that. From that? For that. Um, just because, like I said, the internet's not too great. I want to make sure the guide is awesome. We're going to be moving on to the next boss in the Learning to Boss series, which is going to be Sara Doman God Wars. I'm going to learn how to do that solo, learn how to flick all the minions, and hopefully get the longest possible trips. Very excited to move on to that one. You can expect a video of that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, as for the ending clip, I'm going to show you guys my first raid's loot. Keep in mind... I did 139 raids before I saw this drop. And since then, I've done another 40 and haven't seen one since. But I think the drop itself perfectly made up for it. Hope you guys enjoyed that last clip. I'll catch you guys in the next video, which will be very soon. Take it easy. I'm recording. Holy fuck. Oh my god, finally. I thought you were kidding me, dude. That's sick. Oh my god, it's been so fucking long. This is raid 135. They're 1 in 23 if you get max points. Oh, come on, please. Evie, just got to drop. Oh, shit. Oh my god, come on. Oh, what'd you get here? What'd you get here? What's it gonna be? I don't even fucking care what it is. I'm just so happy. Teemo, Teemo, Teemo. Let's see what you got. It's a Teemo. That's literally the worst drop you can get. Oh my god. I got dragon throwing axes. Sad game. Oh my fucking god. Sad fucking game.